Today's video is going to be about a magnetic filling fountain pen. It's pen BBS's 492 Year of the Rat. I ordered my pen directly from the link on Chris Rap 52's description box. It's the Taobao Focus, which is a proxy service that you can get a China only pen sent to your home. Chris references Douglas Rathbun's review on the pen, so I'll put links to both Douglas's and Chris's review in the description box below. Their reviews were very helpful, and especially Chris's link directly to the pen so you don't have to search around on Taobao Focus. The paper cover on the box has a picture of a rat, and Happy New Year for the Year of the Rat. The box has pen BBS on it, and it's a really thick box. Inside the super cushion box is the pen and an ink well or ink bottle. The ink bottle has a picture of a rat on it and it's repeated throughout the pen. It's a heavy bottom glass bottle with a really nice cap. It has mother of pearl and then the red rat. The cap is nice and solid. And buried deep in the foam is the pen. This pen commemorates the Chinese Zodiac Year of the Rat. It's sold only in China, and that's why you have to use a proxy service to get them to mail the pen to you. This is my first magnetic filling pen. Starting from the top, the pen is gorgeous. It's a clear demonstrator with the hardware, a kind of pastel, dusty copper color. That copper color is extended even to the nib. Inlaid in the top of the cap is a magnet. It also has the same picture of the rat. The clip is kind of sword shaped and has a lantern imprint on the top. The center band is ribbed and has a picture of a rat, the words pen BBS in 2020 on the back and the clip lines up with a little divot on the center band. And here's the piston attached to another magnet just kind of sitting in the middle of the barrel. It looks pretty cool. It has pen BBS engraved on it, along with the imprint of the lantern that was on the clip, and then 2020. And then finally, the end cap is also of a matching copper color and it has, again, the rat on it. And inside of the rat, there's a little engraving with a number and it matches the number that was inside my box, which is 178. Overall, it's an aesthetically pleasing pen. Actually, pictures of this video really doesn't do it justice. The clip is firm without being too stiff. Here I'll slide a thin plastic ruler in it and it works just fine. Like any normal simpleton faced with a magnet, I ran around the house trying to figure out what it would stick to. It's very handy to open up your dishwasher. It's a pretty strong magnet. And in case my thumbnail confused you, well, there was a pen hiding behind it. The cap comes off in just a little over one full turn. There's no inner lining or inner cap inside of the cap. Instead, the section here, when you put the cap on, ends up going up against a step inside of the cap. And that kind of makes the seal. It actually makes for a nice clean look. The section comes off and has an o-ring that stays on really well. I took the section off and on several times and I had no problems with it. The nib has the same soft copper color and again the same image of the rat, pen BBS, and an F underneath the section for my fine nib. Unlike my other pen BBS pens, I couldn't pull the nib out or the feed from the unit. That ended up being kind of annoying because I tested this pen in both pigment and shimmering inks and it was more difficult to clean as a result. You can remove the end cap by using the magnet first to get it going 
and then using kind of a sticky thing and then getting your fingernails <laughs> under it and kind of unscrewing it. It ends up being helpful later when you're dealing with the piston sticking. Here with the section and the end cap off, I'm using a chopstick to get it pushed down and then I had to use something smaller to get it all the way out. Here is the pen disassembled, the nib unit, the section, the cap, the piston attached to its own magnet, the end cap, and then the barrel. Shooting this clip was difficult because the magnets all kept sticking to each other. Even the Allen wrench for my tripod kept sticking to it. Okay, let's reassemble it. We'll put the nib unit back into the section. We'll put the piston back into the barrel with the magnet side toward the end cap. Put the section back on. And put the end cap on by first kind of starting it with the cap, then finishing it off by pushing it down onto a sticky grip and just twisting it. Here's the pen length in comparison to my hand. That's a slab of Siberian jade in the background. You can post the pen, but it's not real secure. It kind of wiggles around. Now let's do some size comparisons. Here it is next to the pen BBS 500. It's the same size and has the same clip shape. And here it is uncapped. It has the same nib. It's longer than a Pilot Kakuno and its nib looks like it's slightly larger. It's slightly longer than a Platinum 3776, but about the same girth. And it's much longer than the Platinum when it's uncapped, though their nibs look like they're about the same size. As an aside, here in Japan, at the beginning of spring, people traditionally go up into the mountains to forage for wild mountain vegetables called sansai. These wild vegetables are only available during the spring. These are thought to be healthy for you. The curly ones on the left are called kagomi, which is ostrich fern, and the ones on the right is taronome, which is angelica tree sprouts. Here they are cooked. You need to cook them or they're toxic. They're in kind of a soy sauce base. They're kind of slightly bitter and nutty tasting. A color similar to those vegetables is Eye Paper's Autumn Crab, a kind of grayish green. Here I'm using the cap with the magnet in it to draw the piston down to the bottom of the barrel so that I can fill it. I don't think I figured out the knack for it, but it took me a little while to get it to the bottom. The bottle's half empty, so I'm gonna to have to kind of tilt it to be able to fill it. I have a new tripod set up, and so of course I missed about half of this fill off camera, but um, I'll be filling it two more times, so once with a pigment ink and then once more with a shimmering ink. Well, all the fun was off camera, but the most startling thing was how the ink colored the complete pen. It's gorgeous. The pen wrote like a typical pen BBS fine nib. It was nice and smooth. And it kept up with my fast scribbles. It looks like a completely different pen with all that ink in it. Do you want to know what time it is? Pen time. Not being able to take that nib and feet out of the unit was really annoying when I was trying to clean it out. One thing that was helpful was that the little tip of the nib unit fit right inside the bulb syringe so I could kind of squeeze water through it. The next ink is Ganza 6 and Kakimori's collaboration. It's a set of three coordinated inks, and the one that I'll be using is Autumn Silk. It's a pigment ink. After cleaning, I just reassembled it with the piston down at the bottom. Again, it's not full, so I have to kind of tilt the bottle to be able to ink it up. 
I ended up using the foam from the box and just laying it sideways to ink it up. I need to pick my ink and bottle levels a little bit better for the next video. I never really got the real hang of it. I just had to go really slow to get that magnet to come up, but it was pretty neat doing it. It got harder as you started to get to the end of the nib, and I found that to be true too when I was trying to move the piston down. It was just harder when it was near the end of the barrel. And now it looks pretty full. And again, it's stunning how the ink totally changes the look of the pen. I feel like I got a totally different pen. It looks pretty cool. I got a whopping three and a half milliliters of ink into this pen, but it seemed to struggle a little bit with the a pigmented ink. It was smooth, but then all these little curly cues, I felt like there was a little bit of skipping going on. And it struggled with some of my faster scribbling and writing. Some of this, I'm sure, can be cured with a little bit of nib fiddling. But that would be a whole lot easier if I could pull that nib and feed you out of the unit. As another aside, I feel I have an interesting teapot collection. One comes complete with a fountain pen. Really handy. This staying at home thing is really getting to me. And lastly, we're going to try a shimmering ink. This is Tono and Lim's Burma Tourmaline. And I picked another bottle that wasn't all the way full, so I'm going to have to tilt this to fill it up. For me, so far, the only way I can get this to consistently fill is to go really slow and just kind of slowly pull that piston up. I did add some silicon grease to the um, ring there, but um, I don't, maybe I just didn't add enough, but it's very slow going for me. So let me speed this process up a little bit. I'm definitely going to need to add a lot more silicon grease to that piston. I also found by taking off the um, end cap, it went a little bit faster. Though this looks like a little bit of a hassle, it was actually pretty fun. Okay, I think that's about as full as this one's going to get. You take the cap off, and the pen looks stunning. I just love the way how each ink gives it a totally different look. This is a very, very light ink. It's basically water with just a very little bit of color and lots of shimmer. So I just wanted to try it out as a shimmer ink. It looks so much better with a, a bigger nib, but it's right smooth and it seems to keep up. So it looks like the only problem that this pen had was with the pigmented ink. I feel like this pen is a better value and much nicer looking than many of the pens that are coming out of China now. I really enjoyed it though I had problems using it mainly because of my technique, but I think it's a really worthwhile pen. I've heard rumors that they may start selling this pen on Etsy. That would be really nice, but if they don't, head on over to Chris Rap 52s uh, video and you can go to the direct link that'll take you to Taobao Focus. The other day when I was working on this video, I was listening to the podcast Tokyo Inklings and Jacob said my channel was like Michael Bay Mayhem of Ink. I don't think he's right because if it was Michael Bay Mayhem, it would kind of look like this.
Now that is Ink Bayhem. Check out CY and Jacob's podcast. I'll leave the link down below. There's ink everywhere.